In the early years of the 21st century, the Royal Institution underwent a major program of refurbishment. The work was partly to conserve important elements of the old building, but it was also a reinvention of the RI itself. Why was that reinvention needed? When I first came as director in 1998, I remember the sun shining on the dust motes and the silence almost sort of suffocating you. And although in those days we had the discourses on Friday nights, these black tie lectures, we had very little else going on in terms of public outreach. We had the labs, of course, doing stellar work, but we didn't have much in the terms of public engagement. And the kind of people that came to the RI were middle-class, white, middle-aged men. And what we're trying to do now is to have much more diversity. Faraday was unusual for his time in having a very identifiable public persona, and one could argue that certain scientists like me are in that tradition nowadays, and uh, is there a place for that? And I think there is. I think it's vital for girls, schoolgirls, and women in science to know that there's other women in science out there and that it's not all white middle-aged men wearing the white coats. And I think that's a really important signal to send out. I think it's also important to have a human face to science for the general public. In some ways, the magnificent facade is part of the challenge facing the Royal Institution. The elitism that is embedded within that classical facade is actually a barrier to a vast number of the potential audience that the Royal Institution would actually like to get in. In the 18th and 19th, now the 20th century, uh, institutions were fairly uh, introverted and, and, uh, and cellular and that's the way they, the whole culture of the place was. This £24 million refit is the latest in a long line of revisions and additions, and it represents a desire for greater informal access to the institution. What we're now trying to do is open it up, make it accessible, bring a lot more people in. It's the democratisation of this institution writ large in the building, so we want to bring them in, particularly to bring them through to the new bits at the back, uh, and where the new bits at the back will be completely open. We're having this glass atrium spanning five floors. There'll not only be the bar that I so wanted, but a bistro where kids can go and sort of soup and salads, a high-tech environment that's fun to be in and eat in. That will enliven the place. And if you think that we also have laboratories with real scientists doing real experiments, we have heritage spaces, we have a media centre, We'll have ongoing events. It'll be science in all its aspects. I think that one of the most interesting aspects of the re renaissance that's going on here at the Royal Institution was one of the first, if not the very first stage for us, was the media centre. And I think the communication of science, the explanation of our world today, Every day in the news there's something about DNA, whether it's some murder being solved, or, or it's about space travel, or it's about global warming. Now, in the news, in the media, all the time. So the role of uh, the institution is a, a, can be a, a very, very significant and critical one in helping to explain science within this building. And that, is, um, that has always, for me, been an absolute touchstone of this building. There are a way they're Constructing and redeveloping the RI now seems deliberately designed to, to pull the public into a common space where the, the public can interact with the scientists. So we've got the same method, if you like, of using the Royal Institution buildings and the architecture to actually create an image of what science is all about and what the scientific process is like. But for all the change and reinvention, the lecture theatre that was Faraday's public stage is staying in a form that he would recognise. Change is happening elsewhere. <laughs>